Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Janna Ballaba Gidi Padadhari Gopi Janna Ballaba Gidi Padadhari
भगवते वासुदेवाया ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाया Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Magyan Timidan Dasya Gyanan Janachalakaya Chakshurun Militam Jena 
Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha Sri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Tatati Swapadantikam Pandeham Sri Guru Sri Juthapatakamalam Sri Guru Vaishnavam Scha Sri Rupam Sagrajatham Sahakana Raghunatham Bitham Tham Sajivam Sadvaitham Savadutham Harijana Sahitham Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padahan Sahakana Lalita Sri Vishakan Vitamscha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Chakatpate Kopesha Kopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Brinda Beneshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vansha Kalpata Dubyascha Kripa Sindubya Evacha Patitanam Bhavanibhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasati Gauda Bhakta Binda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Nitti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Aschatyate Shatharine Welcome to Sri Giriraj Govardhan. It is truly an incomprehensible good fortune for us to be together in this holy of holiest places. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was speaking of one of his devotees, he proclaimed that all the wealth and all the universes of all creation does not have as much value 
in his heart as one devotee who has sincerely offered their hearts to him. When Krishna speaks in this way, it is something so deep and so sincere and how seriously we should understand it. Because the nature of love is selfless service. The nature of love is to value who we love. In this material existence where we have such a strong tendency to take things cheaply, to take people cheaply, to be so endlessly distracted and diverted from what's really important in our life or who is really important in our life. It is common that we cannot really appreciate the value of something or someone until we lose them. When a loved one dies, or in devotee way of talking, when they leave their bodies, Then we start thinking, all the things I should have done, all the things I shouldn't have done, all the things I should have said, and all the things I wish I didn't say, all the time I wasted. It's natural. And it's in those times often that we really come to grips with how much we really valued someone. But the origin of that love and the complete fullness of our love is in the love of Sri Radha Krishna. the love between Krishna and each and every devotee. And Lord Chaitanya is speaking with tears in his eyes that one devotee who offers their heart to me has more value than all of the wealth in all of creation. And how many devotees are there? In the spiritual world, there are limitless devotees. If we could count every grain of sand on every seashore in the universe, every ray of the sun that has ever, from the beginning of time, emanated from the sun, it will not even be a beginning estimation of how many people live with Krishna in this spiritual world. And Krishna is so grateful for everything everyone does for all of eternity. And the devotees are so grateful for everyone, toward every one of each other. Because to love Krishna means to please Krishna. 
when we understand how much Krishna loves his devotees, naturally we love Krishna's devotees. When we understand how Krishna loves all living beings, naturally we yearn and long to please Krishna by loving all living beings. When Krishna performs his pastimes in this world on the transcendental platform, he is giving us a vision and experience of who we really are and what is really important in our lives. Nasta praishi badre shunityam bhagavati sevaya. We are recommended to hear Srimad Bhagavatam regularly, every day. We are recommended Kirtaniya Sadahari to always be chanting the holy name. When Ramananda Rai was asked by Lord Chaitanya, <clears throat> what is the greatest sorrow? And Ramananda Rai said, to be without the association of devotees is the only sorrow that I know of. Because in the association of the Lord, when we hear these beautiful narrations, teachings, we're reminded of who we are. We're distracted from the distractions. We all have so many duties to perform, so many concerns we have to tend to because it's just part of the dharma of living in this world. Brahmacharis have their dharmas to do. Grihastas have theirs. Vanaprastas have theirs. And if you speak to His Holiness Bhaktivedyan Goswami, and he tells you about all the dharmas a sannyasi has to deal with, you will be quite astounded. Everyone has their duties and their roles to fulfill in this world. But they should never distract us from the purpose, the purpose of all these roles, the purpose of life. Bhakti Vinod Thakur, who had a had a beautiful house close by at Sri Radha Kund. He was a married person with about ten children. So many responsibilities he had to society. But he was never distracted. He integrated everything he did with Krishna consciousness. Some said the on whatever duties we perform, if they do not please Krishna, if they don't awaken an eagerness to hear about Krishna, Srama Eva he gave along. It's a waste of time, and time is so precious. Sometimes we hear these pastimes of Krishna in Vrindavan, or the stories from Srimad Bhagavatam, Ramayana, and we think these stories are too incredible. They're 
too impossible. Demons coming 12 miles long, 8 miles long, horses, snakes, whirlwinds, and, you know, talking peacocks, <laughs> and so many cows, where to fit them all. Really, if you personally try to take care of cows, you'll understand. Inconceivable. Because it really takes a lot of effort to take care of a few cows. Nanda Maharaj had 900,000 cows. And so many calves, practically countless. And as many bulls. And Krishna made every one of them completely happy. Every cow, every calf, every bull was thinking Krishna's mine and I am Krishna's. When Krishna was in that pastures with them, they were fully conscious in ecstatic love. Every movement of a cow, every moo of a cow, every glance of a cow was an expression of prem or ecstatic love for Krishna. And they could feel, because it was a reality, that Krishna was personally reciprocating. Every time a little claff blinked her eye, she could feel Krishna reciprocating with love, with care. Because they were blinking their eyes for Krishna's pleasure whatever voluntary or involuntary movements, their lives were for Krishna's pleasure. And they could deeply feel in the core of their hearts that Krishna is pleased. Krishna is the source of all love. That is Krishna. So when Krishna comes to this world, he reveals a spiritual reality that is so beyond the imagination of the material condition of life. And when we understand the principles in the first nine cantos of Srimad Bhagavatam, the 18 chapters of Bhagavad Gita, we understand what is the nature of the absolute truth. What is the nature of the cause of all causes? What is the nature of the father and mother of all living beings? What is the nature of the creator of all that exists? Sarvasya chaham hridhi shani jnana Krishna is within our heart. He's the source of all remembrance, knowledge, and forgetfulness. Aham saravasya prabhavo matta saravam pravartiti. And he's the source of all material and spiritual worlds. Everything emanates from him. Now we may think for Krishna or Krishna's devotees or these pastimes, they sound so mythological or mythological. How could they happen? because nobody we've ever known can do anything like that. But among your friends or among the people you read about in your history books or yourself, how many are the source of all material and spiritual worlds from whom everything emanates? That's God. 
So for Krishna to lift Govardhan Hill with one little finger, it's simply a pastime. And the more we actually understand the nature of our own eternal soul, and the more we understand the nature of the cause of all causes, God, Bhagavan, the more when we hear these pastimes, the more incredible, unbelievable, and inconceivable they are, the happier we become. There's no doubt, there's no question. Is this possible? Is this just a story? Is this something analo an, an analogy to teach me a lesson? Those analogies to teach us lessons are included within the stories. But they're real. Krishna's wonderful. And he comes to this world to engage in such, such wonderful activities, steeped in such love and such compassion. And if we hear it attentively, we understand that all of these distractions of the material world are just insignificant in comparison. We will not want to do anything that's separated from our beloved. So Bhakti Vinod Thakur, he was so expert at everything he did. He did his duty with such precision. Even the British government was constantly giving him awards and congratulations and higher services. He was a judge, a magistrate. But everything he did, he would channelize it all for the pleasure of Krishna and to spread Krishna consciousness to more and more people's hearts. When Lord Chaitanya tells that each devotee is more valuable than all the wealth of creation, and we know how much people are really attached to wealth in this world, then our consciousness becomes realistic. In our pilgrimage this year, in Vrindavan, there were 5,000 people registered. Probably another 500 or 1,000 coming unregistered. <laughs> and it's easy for us to just see numbers and people. But everyone's coming to purify their hearts. Everyone's coming with a sincere longing to make a deep connection to Krishna. Everyone's coming because they, they're, to their various levels, yearning for love for Krishna. How rare. How special. So this morning I took a walk for about three hours, kind of all alone. One devotee was kind of invisibly around. And I was walking along the pathways of Brajbhumi. And I was thinking, how nice it is to be alone in Vrindavan. <laughs> because it really is nice.
But if we could please other devotees, there's nothing that could be more nice than that. In our kitchens, we had National Geographic television station filming our kitchen for the last week or so. They're doing a whole episode on international TV. And the feature is a moving kitchen for thousands of people that just that gets set up in a day and taken down and put somewhere else. So for us, it's just the way we live. <laughs> but surprisingly, other people, it's, it's, it's different for them. <laughs> but those devotees in the kitchen, Karuna Sindhu Prabhu, he came all the way from Canada. Canada's over 10,000 miles away. He came all the way just to spend the whole day over those blazing wood fire pots cooking. And he's so happy. And he's not getting paid anything. He had to pay for his own airfare. <laughs> because he understands the value of seva, of service. And so many of the other devotees, Goranga Prabhu, Radha Bala Prabhu, and you can get a whole list of them. They're not even thinking about anything else. And in the next room, there's about a hundred wonderful ladies just singing and ro rolling and cooking chapatis. And they look so happy. And for about eight hours, they're just sitting there making chapatis. They're not getting paid, but they're happy. And what is their happiness? That all of us could go to the holy places of Nandagaon, Barasana, Suryakund, Ahulavan, Talavan, Madhuban, Mahavan, to the temples of Brindavan, to do parikramas of Govardhan, Because we're going on these wonderful pilgrimages and hearing Harikata and seeing the places of Shishi Radha Shamsundar's Leelas, that's their happiness. That they could make nice prasad just so that we can have the most possible, enjoyable, enlightening, fulfilling experience in Vrindavan. So please don't feel guilty that you're enjoying the parikrama and you're not in the kitchen getting your skin burned by fires. Because what makes it meaningful for them is you're having a beautiful experience appreciating Vrindavan. So the principle is, in whatever we may be doing, their service is difficult. But the people who have to help organize the buses and help organize the rooms and help organize all of the logistics, organizing something in Mumbai is not so difficult. But organizing in Uttar Pradesh, <laughs> in the Mathura district, in the Vrindavan forest, in the town of Govardhan, 
unimaginable. But that's the way every yatra has always been. It always begins with the reaction, impossible. I remember when we had just about 2,000 people. I requested. Of course, it was a intensified request. <laughs> it began a very humble request, actually. That we're going to Vrindavan, we're doing our katas and our kirtans at Fogla Ashram, and devotees are staying in probably a couple hundred different places. Half of our yatra should be at Govardhan, so devotees could have the experience of staying in Govardhan. And they said it's impossible. <laughs> to arrange accommodations for 2,000 people at Govardhan, impossible. I said, well, try. So they went to Govardhan, and they came back and said, it is impossible. We went everywhere, it's impossible. So I very humbly said, we'll do it anyway. <laughs> and they did it. And it wasn't easy. We were getting everybody here and there and around the hill. And, it's <laughs> and there's a lot of crowds and a lot of traffic jams and then this little... And then the next year, and this year it's about 5,000. It's not that there's so many more facilities. But on one level, it is impossible. But when, when devotees really want to serve Vaishnavas, a higher power takes over. And that's Krishna's grace. Even though there may be many inconveniences, and some of the organizers were telling me November 13th is the real challenge. We have to move the whole kitchen, and we have to move everyone with all their belongings and everything and everyone from Brindaban to Govardhan and have their meals ready for them and have the pandal set up and have everybody here and in their rooms and bathed and coming. It's difficult for you but they're organizing it, and they're exhausted, but they're happy. <laughs> because they know that they're helping to facilitate 